Okay, chemists, we're going to start our unit on conformational analysis today and look at how molecules exist differently in space. Uh, in front of you, I have a model of a butane molecule, and despite what the model looks like, it's not as static as you might think. It's actually quite flexible, and you could imagine rotating about different carbon-carbon bonds or even carbon-hydrogen bonds. Anytime you rotate around a single bond, that's called a conformational isomer, and we're only looking at one version of that in front of you right now. Now to talk about the types of strain that molecules exhibit and to eventually arrive at their lowest energy, most stable conformations, we use a technique called Newman projections to look at them. A Newman projection is what you get if you take two carbons that are consecutive to each other in a molecule and eclipse them. So I'm going to rotate this molecule and show you a Newman projection. There's one. I've perfectly eclipsed the middle two carbons with each other and I see other things coming off in uh, directions that all look to be about uh, 60 degrees apart, give or take. Now that's not the only Newman projection that's possible. I could eclipse the first two carbons and actually simultaneously the back two and you get two for one. Um, so there's, there's different possible Newman projections for any molecule. I'm going to focus on central Newman projections today because those are usually the most useful and they help us predict how a molecule is going to exist in its best conformation. So today we're going to talk about strain. There's two main types I want you to know the definitions of. The interactions between bulky groups uh, in molecules is called steric strain and then the resistance to rotation about a single bond is called torsional strain and both of those work together uh, in what we'll look at today. So let's recap what we just saw in that animation. We were looking at a butane molecule, and I'm gonna pretend that I've shrunk myself down and I'm looking at that molecule along that perspective. There's my line of sight where I've eclipsed those two carbon atoms. A Newman projection is drawn with a dot to indicate the carbon that's closer to you, and then a circle to indicate the carbon that's farther from you. But those are the two eclipsing carbons. So we have carbon in the back as opposed to the carbon that's in the front. But that's just a, a Newman template. I need to fill in what's attached to each of those carbons. So let's go back to our line structure here. Well, on the carbon on the front, we have a methyl, from our perspective, pointing straight up. And then we also have two hydrogens, don't we? And I'm going to give them direction in this line structure just to remind you of what it would look like if you had that perspective. Those two hydrogens going into the page and out of the page turn that molecule to the side. What does it end up looking like? You have a hydrogen in the lower left and a hydrogen in the lower right. And notice how we draw this. We extend the line all the way to that dot to show that those bonds are coming off of the carbon in the front. The carbon in the back is the same thing. They're just arranged in a different way. I have a methyl, but relative to this stick figure guy, it's pointing straight down. And then I also have two hydrogens. And these are also in the back, but they're in the upper left and the upper right. And notice how we fill them in in the Newman projection. We only extend the line to the circle, meaning those are connected to the carbon in the back, as opposed to these lines that go all the way to the dot, meaning those are connected to the carbon in the front. And that's what every Newman projection looks like. Now we can rotate about that central carbon-carbon bond. So this is only one possible conformation out of essentially an infinite number of possibilities. But let's just look at some key ones by starting arbitrarily at some point. I'm going to actually start with a different one. And then rotate around that bond and imagine what the Newman projection would look like as we hit different, uh, different degrees of rotation. So I'm going to redraw that template which is just a circle and a dot. And I'm gonna start this time with what I consider to be the least stable conformer. The least stable conformer would be, instead of having these methyls pointing in exactly opposite directions, we would actually get them to be right near each other, almost in the same space. You've still got one coming off of the carbon in the front and the other one coming off of the carbon in the back, but now those bonds are parallel to each other. In fact, all the other bonds are gonna be parallel to each other as well. And this is one way of showing that. This is my least stable. And that's because those methyls are almost occupying the same space. They're separated by a couple of carbons, but they're much closer to each other in space than they would be in any other possible Newman projection. We call this an eclipsed conformation. And what I'm going to do 
is draw all the other possible conformers every 60 degrees about rotation by rotating about that carbon-carbon bond. And I'm gonna do this a little systematically. I'm gonna keep my Newman projection in the front the same, and I'm gonna abbreviate it a little bit. I'm gonna show my methyl, and I'm just gonna show a single line to save space for those two hydrogens. Um, actually, no, I will, I will fill them in. The right thing to do is to actually fill them in. So we're gonna, we're gonna draw a 60 degree, and then we're gonna draw a 180, or 120 I mean, then 180, then we're gonna draw a 240, a 300, and then a full circle at 360. Now I'm arbitrarily starting at this point, and I am calling this zero degrees, and then I'm gonna draw a rotation to make it 60, and etc. cetera, 120, 180. Well, what would it look like if I rotated the carbon in the back 60 degrees? Then this methyl would be here, this hydrogen would be here, and this hydrogen would be here. So I would get a confirmation that actually looks like that, where there's this staggered arrangement of bonds. In fact, this is called a staggered confirmation as opposed to the bonds on the front carbon and the back carbon all being parallel to each other, they're now in a staggered arrangement. So we call it a staggered conformation. Uh, where did the methyl go? It's in the upper right, and then my hydrogens are in the remaining spots. Let's keep going, let's rotate it again. Now we're at 120 degrees. Uh, we're actually back to a different eclipsed conformer, but this time the methyls aren't occupying the same space. There's a methyl hydrogen eclipsing each other, and then there's another different methyl hydrogen eclipsing each other right there. And then there's a hydrogen hydrogen eclipsing interaction. If we keep going, we get to 180. We're back to a different staggered conformation. Now the methyl is at the very bottom. The other two spots are H's. Rotate 60 degrees more. I'll call it 240. We're back to a different eclipsed conformation. This time the methyl is in the lower left. The other spots have hydrogens. One more time. We'll call this 300. Now I'm back to a staggered conformer. Methyl in the upper left. Other two spots have H's. And one more I'll call 360. This is actually full circle. We're back to the same. That's where we were at zero degrees. And we have those methyls eclipsing each other just like they were in the beginning. So we went back and forth between eclipse, staggered, eclipsed, staggered, eclipsed, staggered, etc. And it's worth making a note, if you're ever in a staggered confirmation, that is preferred to eclipsed, almost always. A staggered is better, meaning more stable, than eclipsed. But not all those staggereds are created equal, and not all those eclipsed conformers are created equal. Some of them are better than others. So let's rank them in terms of stability with what we think, one being the most stable. Well, which one's the best? It's the one we happen to hit right in the middle. That's gonna be our best one, because if you look at it, that has those two methyls as far apart as possible in that particular staggered arrangement. We call those in an anti- confirmation because the methyl groups are pointing in opposite directions. Now most stable in chemistry means lowest in energy, so I'm going to give this a point on my relative energy diagram somewhere low. Let's ask the opposite question. What's our worst case scenario? Well the worst case scenario is actually the one we started with. So these are the worst, which happen to be where we started and also where we end. So those are gonna be the highest in energy. Arbitrarily put some spot up there and up there. Now what about the remaining four? Well, there's some that are the same, I hope you can tell by symmetry. The staggered conformer at 60 is actually the same as the staggered conformer at uh, 300. It's still staggered, so it's still relatively low in energy, but it's not as good as 180 because we have these methyls right next to each other. This has actually got a name. This is called a Gauss interaction. 
meaning the groups that are not hydrogen are right next to each other in a staggered conformation. They're actually not really right next to each other. They're separated by a couple of carbons, uh, but in that what's called dihedral angle of 60 degrees apart, it's less stable than the anti-conformer that we have. It's still staggered, so it's still relatively low, but it's not as good as the 180. So I'll make it there, and then 300 is a tie. Now the only two left are the 120 and the 240. Now those are eclipsed, so they're going to be relatively high in energy, but not as high as our 0 and our 360, because we don't have a methyl-methyl eclipsing interaction. We have methyl-hydrogen eclipsing interactions, which are much easier to handle than methyl-methyl eclipsing interactions. Remember, writing ME is an easy way to forget that that's a carbon with three hydrogens. That's a four-atom group as opposed to just one hydrogen atom. So these are high in energy, but not as high as our 0 and 360. So I'll put them relatively up there. Now those are only the minima and maxima. There are other conformers that are in between, but we can approximate what those energies are by just drawing a curve of the relative energies that we see. And that would encompass every possible conformer to a rough approximation of where our high points and low points are for all the staggereds and all the eclipsed conformers. And this would just continue to rotate. What really matters is our lowest energy point. This is the most stable conformer. And that's where that molecule normally will exist. Now, every molecule has its own energy diagram, and this is just for the Newman projection that we're studying down those two carbons. So this is a very specific uh, lens to look at this molecule with, but we could look at it for other molecules and down any two carbons. And eventually, we'll not be drawing all these graphs. We'll just be able to look at a structure and recognize how it minimizes its energy. And that means we can predict how it's going to react with other molecules in three dimensions.